Hey everyone, I hope you are well and welcome to the first ever We Are Listening online event. In fact, this is the biggest one we've ever done, so thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Victoria and I'm the founder of We Are Listening and Creative Marketing Manager of Tool and Records. Um, for you that might not know already, so We Are Listening is our female platform and event series to help grow, nurture and find more female talent in the industry. Today we have some amazing panels planned and I hope everyone watching this comes away feeling inspired and comes away feeling that they've, you know, they found the day genuinely useful and helpful. Okay, welcome to our very first panel of the day, listening to female voices and how to carve a career in radio. So for anyone that's just joining us, I'm Carly Wilford and on today's panel, I am gonna be joined by firstly, Charlie Hedges. Hopefully she's going to be joining us. Um, hey, how you doing? How's it going? Yeah, good. How are you? I'm good, thank you, mate. All good. Thanks for having me. No, of course. So not only do we have you, we also have Charlie T. She's going to be joining us. Hey, hi. 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 <laughs> and last but not least, Sarah Story. How are you? Hello. I'm good, thank you. How are I mean, you? What a way to start a morning. This is one hell of a panel. <laughs> I just can't wait to be in a room with all of you having a little dance. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, it's going to be wicked. Now, look, radio is not one of only the most important and unique platforms for broadcast in the world. In the music world, it connects us not only to the tunes, but the artists that we love, whilst giving brand new musicians a real opportunity to reach new audiences. So if you're wanting to kickstart a career in radio today, as you can see, we're joined by some incredible voices who have worked from the ground up to make their radio dream a reality. So what I'd love to do is start with you, Charlie. Tell us a bit about how you first got into the industry, what station you work for, how long you've been in that position and the type of show that you do. So mine's a bit of a, yeah, it's a bit of a mad one, really. So I'm at Radio 1 now. I do dance anthems on a Saturday from four o'clock, which is like the dream. Um, and also the dream, working with Ricky and Melvin still, uh, Monday to Thursday, 8 p.m. at night. So my way in, um, long story short, basically I was 13. I have always wanted to be a DJ, always loved music, loved writing as well. And I saw, um, I saw in this local newspaper an advert for this magazine was looking for a freelance journalist. I mean, I was 13, I had no experience whatsoever, but I just thought, sod it, I'm just gonna contact them and see what they say. So I got in contact with them. They was like, do you know what? For the cheek of you asking, come along. So my dad used to drop me off um, and I just used to do loads of running around for them, making teas, coffees. And then it got to the point where they started letting me um, write some articles in the magazine, which was just mad. It was then at the time my, my dad was a London black taxi driver and randomly he picked up one of the DJs at the time on Kiss. And if anyone's met my dad, which I know obviously there's a gazillion people in the world, but a lot of you would have met my dad because if you got in his cab, he wouldn't have shut up about it. <laughs> and he, he's like, oh, he's an absolute ledge. He's, he's the best dad in the world. And he picked one of the guys up and was like, my daughter's uh, working for this magazine. Can she come up and interview you? They said yes, went up to Kiss, interviewed them, absolutely bricked it. Um, put to my pants and then I just kept in touch with them so every school holiday when I was at school I used to go out there and do work experience and literally anytime I had all weekends I used to go up there and it was only until I started I was just starting the degree in journalism at Harlow uh, College and I got a call from the breakfast show saying look we need a runner we need a team maker are you up for it and I was like, oh my gosh, like, well, I didn't, I don't even think I said yes. I just put the phone down and got my stuff ready for the next day. And um, I remember my uni teacher going, look, if you do both this and, and obviously still work at Kiss, because I was doing, I was working on the breakfast show at the time. So I used to have to get into the breakfast show about 4.30 in the morning. And I'd finish at nine and then go to my uni degree. And my tutor was like, you are, you're not passing your exams if you do both. And when someone says you can't do something to me, like it makes me want it more. So I did. I, I got my degree, stayed there for three years whilst working on the breakfast show behind the scenes. And then it was one day where they'd asked this particular question on the on the breakfast show and none of the people working on the show knew the answer. And I was just this kid sitting in the corner, like 
really like just wanting to shout out the answer because I knew it, but obviously I wasn't on air. And when they come off air, they was like, you know the answer, don't you? Get on the mic. And that was it. And that was literally the start of me talking on the radio. A complete fluke, a question they didn't know the answer to. I knew it. And in and it went from there. Sorry, I said long story short. That was the shortest way. <laughs> <of it. laughs> I love it. What a brilliant, brilliant story. And look, it's obviously worked and you've worked really, really hard. You've grafted and look where you've ended up and you're absolutely smashing it. Well done, Charlie. Thanks, um, Thanks. From, from one Charlie to the next then, Charlie <laughs> P, tell us a bit about, about your journey. I love that story, Charlie, by the way, about your dad. I've heard you tell that so many times and it never gets old. Um, I guess my weirdly is a bit similar to the other Charlie. I've done a multitude of different things uh, apart from radio. So I used to love drum and bass when I was younger. I almost failed my uni degree because I was going to raves all the time. That was kind of like my first taste of electronic dance music. Um, and then when I finished uni, I decided that I wanted to be a music journalist. So I went and interned for DJ Mag right in there. Uh, I did a, an online think tank for Sony Music, which was like a 16 to 24 year old think tank where they would send me artists and I'd review them and stuff to get kind of a younger opinion on it. Um, and then I went and decided that I wanted to do in front of, a, I wanted to be a presenter in front of a camera. And then DB TV, I auditioned for that. And I was the presenter for Drum Bass TV for years, interviewing all the biggest drum and bass stars. Um, and then off the back of DB TV, I got poached by a community radio station called Westside FM, which is in West London. Um, so I went and did three and a half years there. And then I entered a competition called the Kiss Chosen One. Yes! In 13. Wow. And um, I won that out of 6,000 people. So yeah, I've wow. done quite a lot of different things with the music, whether it be journalism, presenting, radio. But yeah, just was kind of a bit of a yes man for years. And um, yeah, just kind of tried everything. And um, yeah, here we are now. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? You have to just work hard and graph from, from the bottom up. And even entering that competition, the Kiss Chosen one, so yeah. many people entered that. And you can sometimes think, oh, it's never going to be me. But look what happened. And you, you, you've had a long career in radio ever since. OK, Sarah, what about you? Tell us a bit about your journey. Um, so I've always been a massive radio lover, geek. Um, got into it when I was uh, about 14. I did work experience, or 15, whenever you do work experience at school. Uh, I did two days there and they let me sort out the CDs. <laughs> remember, remember them? Um, and um, from that, they let me kind of do flyering for the radio station. So anytime there was kind of an outside broadcast, I would go and hand out flyers and get people on stage and stuff. And that's how I got in with the people at the radio station. And then um, I got my job with them when I was 16, hosting, co-hosting a show on a Saturday afternoon, because I found out through someone else that someone was this is awful, really. Someone was going to get the boot. So I rang them up and was like, can I have their job? <laughs> and they were like, yeah. So they gave me a job. So that was my Saturday job when I was 16. And uh, that was in Cumbria, where I'm from. And did that for like two years. Then I went to University of Liverpool, did a music degree, did university radio, thought I was Annie Mack playing like techno on a Friday afternoon. Um, yeah. And I was terrible. Um, I was terrible at it. And then when I was uh, 22 or 21, I moved to Leeds and got a job in a call centre, um, but really wanted to get into radio, but didn't know anybody in Leeds that did it. And then I... Another thing I do is sing. I write music and sing. And I was in a band and we got interviewed by BBC Introducing in York. And um, the girl that interviewed me was just so nice. And I said to her, again, being cheeky, can I get a lift back to Leeds with you? And she said, yeah. So I'm in the car. I'm asking, do you know anyone in Leeds to give me some uh, to like get me get me in somewhere in the radio industry? And she said, yeah, I met a guy from Capital that runs Capital Leeds last week. Do you want his email address? She met him at a house party. And then that was it. So I emailed him and pestered him for about a year. Um, and yeah, and then, and that was kind of got, I didn't just get in like that. Like I had to do demo after demo after demo because I was a bit scared of um, presenting on my own. So I did it with other people. And then, yeah, started working at Capital in 2014 and left last year. And I've just started covering at Radio One now, so it's been <laughs> so it's been a it's been a really like fun journey, and I've worked 
all around the country for different capitals, doing breakfast shows, drive time shows, dance music shows. So I feel like I've covered quite a lot of the radio shows that you can do, which has been which has been a lot of fun. Brilliant. Now, <laughs> um, Charlie, Charlie Hedges, I just want to come back to you because you obviously mentioned working behind the scenes on radio mm -hmm. before becoming a presenter. So what I'd love to know for anyone that's watching this, obviously, there's a really unique relationship between a presenter and a producer. Tell yeah. us a bit about that relationship and how it works day to day. I mean, your your producers are for me the unsung heroes. They they are the ones that should be getting shouted out twenty four seven because without them you don't have a show. And for me, like I actually see my producers more than I see my own members' family. You you basically are in a relationship with them, and that relationship has to be a good one. I mean, I, I've never worked with anyone that I, I don't get on with because I'm not that sort of person anyway. I feel like I get on with everyone, but. My producers, I'm so lucky. So in the, the weeknight show with the boys, I've actually got two female produce, uh, producers now, which is like, big up Katie and Rosie. That's that's incredible. Like, we're talking about girl power today. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's just incredible. And then I've got Nathan, who does my dance anthem show. Equally, they're, they're just the most important people in your lives. And it is a complete 100% team effort without them the show don't exist without you the show don't exist so you just have to have the best relationship and also do you know what honesty I feel like you need to be honest if there's tunes you're putting in that they don't like they need to be able to tell you that you know if you've done a link on there and you sound crap they need to be able to tell you that that weren't your best performance you need to sort it out so you've just got to be 100% honest with each other and worship them because they are the most important people in your lives for sure in the industry. Charlie, how do you work with a producer and, and what does a producer do day to day? So I've done a multitude of different shows over the years. Now I'm predominantly specialist um, and I do a dance music show on a Friday on Kiss Fresh, but I've covered everything. I've covered you, Charlie, when you were on Kiss, Charlie, Ricky, Ricky Mamma and Charlie, covered drive shows, daytime shows. So producers work differently across the board, really. Specialists, um, you mainly curate the music and you put the mixes together yourself and the, the specialist producers will build it or help you with the guest mixes. But a daytime producer is, yeah, just so vital there. I don't think people realize that they're, they're geniuses, the way their brains work and the way they come up with ideas that are innovative and, you know, just so interactive with everybody. It's, I Sometimes I'm just like, how do you think of this stuff? Like they're just... Yeah, they really are, like Charlie says, the unsung heroes. And um, yeah, they just have this unrivaled passion for music and radio and their knowledge of it is just incredible. <laughs> and you have these really great meetings before the shows. I mean, it works differently at every single radio station, but when I've done daytime shows, you all sit down and you share your ideas and, and it's a collaborative effort. Um, but yeah, you do really come up with ways to really engage with your audience and make sure it's you know on brand and on target with what's going on within all the news in the week and yeah it really is a collaborative effort on a on a daytime show for sure and that's the thing with radio isn't it things are ever changing and especially when you're on air something yeah. can happen whilst you're on your show that you need to engage with straight away and the producers are the people that bring that information to you yeah. and you work together as a team to make that happen and obviously when it's live all sorts can happen, right? So Sarah, what I'd love to do is come to you and just talk a little bit about what it's like um, for a typical day for you. And obviously you've worked for different stations and has that changed depending on the station that you're on? But what does a typical day look like for you? As in planning the show kind of thing, yeah. So I suppose when I was doing um, work for Capital, because most of the music is already picked by a team, it was more me kind of planning the content within the links. Um, so yeah, I would kind of make sure that was across to everything that was going on in in the kind of, in the media and in, in pop world, I suppose, and, and making sure that was on top of everything that the artists were doing. Instagram is the best place. Like I love Instagram because you constantly on the newest thing that that person's doing at that time. Um, and then with specialist stuff, it's kind of it's a it's a constant thing for me with music. So every single day I'm getting sent um, promo from 
various people um i'm also looking for music myself i love discovering new people like i love finding someone that no one sent me i'm like yes i found them first um and and yeah so that is just a constant thing of just always looking for music and then i'll just have a little google doc where i just put loads of tunes in a dropbox and then what i'll do what i have been doing um with sam who's my producer at the moment is we will just sit one day and listen to everything that we've picked and then and it's that's the hardest but the funnest part because it's like there's so much amazing music i want to play all of it i don't have time to so then you've got to really kind of whittle it down um so yes yeah, so I, I feel like that's just a, a constant ongoing thing the specialist stuff so charlie hedges for you obviously your show's a little bit different because you're on almost every day <laughs> sorry, <guys. laughs> sorry for boring you all <laughs> no absolutely not tell us a little bit about how your day differs potentially to maybe a specialist show that's maybe music led obviously you have a lot of music on your show but it's also quite topical isn't it the things that you talk about yeah so we're we're lucky with our weeknight show because even though it does come under a specialist show we still get to keep the element that the three of us love and that is the I suppose the banter between the three of us and just like chatting about normal everyday stuff so for that show um in the week it consists of a once a week full meeting with the whole team including production obviously and that is going through talking points music so what free plays we all want to choose we all get a certain amount that we can put into the show which is wicked um, and it also is really cool because the three of us have got slightly dis different music taste some of us cross over but that's really exciting so at the start of the week we have a massive production meeting and then for dance anthem similar sort of thing but obviously completely music led um i'll meet the producer online at the minute obviously once a week and we'll go through all the tunes that we're loving at the minute we do two hours of classics um from four on a saturday and then we do an hour of today's anthem so all the new stuff so for for nathan in particular it's him looking at you know all the tunes that are smashing at the minute the stuff that's bubbling sarah you're just talking about like one of your biggest things is like finding artists that no one else has played mm -hmm. and um there was a proper pinchy moment a couple of weeks ago so Nathan, again, my producer, he saw a post with uh, Steven Gerrard, the footballer, playing this track in his car on the way to a football stadium the other day. So it's a guy called Owen Westlake. This tune's been around for a few years, but it, it, it just didn't do anything. Anyway, this come out on um, Gerrard's page. So we was like, do you know what? Let's play it on dance anthems. Let's go for it. Played it went off like everyone just loved it so we've been playing it and playing it and playing it and we just found out that that tune has now been re-signed to a massive label mm -hmm. so I, I felt like i go cold it gets me choked up because i think like that is just that's next level to be able mm -hmm. to have their production meetings in the week and then produce something like that where someone has got such a wicked opportunity that for me beats everything mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's quite a big responsibility because you are actually helping to give these artists such a massive platform. Like I just released a track on Tour Room, obviously, um, and I never, when I was on radio, obviously I understood its power. But noticing what happens on Shazam when you get radio play, as an artist, you see in the back end that instant data now, and you see that spike. So what you guys do day to day is so important for new music and so important for new artists because it does give them that opportunity. And you've now, Charlie, been instrumental in that track being signed to a major label. It's amazing. I don't care about me. I was honestly, when 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 my producer said that this track has been signed, I was like, I will die happy. I just want the opportunity to, to, to push something over the line. And if that's the one, that's it. I mean, no, I don't want to leave dance anthems, bloody hell. No. And Sarah, I know what you're like, nicking people's jobs. <laughs> I <promise> um, one. <laughs> oh, so we've mentioned quite a lot um, the difference between specialist and um, daytime radio. And Charlie, you've mentioned you've worked in both. For anybody that doesn't really understand that, can you just break down the difference between the two for me? Yeah, sure. I think the main more, more notable difference is the fact that daytime is playlisted. Um, so all of the tracks are chosen by a music team within each station and it works in, it works differently everywhere, but it's mainly like A-list, B-list, C-list. Um, and they have tracks on rotation, sometimes with recurrence, which are like older tracks that have a resurgence that come back through. Um, so daytime, everything is playlisted and all the music is planned. 
And for a specialist music show, um, it is down to the DJs and sometimes the producers um, collaboratively together to choose the music for the show. Um, most DJs pick their own music and mix their own tracks for a lot of the really, really specialist stuff. But some of the uh, bigger shows, like big Friday night shows and stuff, will be a collaborative effort between producers and, and the presenters and the broadcasters. Brilliant. So, and one difference. Yeah, wicked. So one thing that Sarah touched on is obviously like hunting out new music. What I'd love to throw out to all of you is how do you find that music for your show? Is it that you're sent it or do you go like on deep SoundCloud, um, I don't know, holes really finding new music? And mm -hmm. how does that work for each of you? Yeah, I, I do all of those things. I go in, I get deep into someone's Instagram. You know, like when you go in a hole on Instagram and you're like, you might be looking at some random people's kids and you're like how have i ended up here i do that with music um and i've discovered quite a lot of people through following certain record labels um and yeah through spotify maybe or soundcloud soundcloud's obviously a good place because that's generally really new stuff that's not been uh, released yet um and a good thing that i found is just having a, my promo email on the top of my instagram getting sent so much stuff and it is it does take a lot of time to go through some of it, but you can find some some gems there. So there's so many different ways of finding stuff. Um, and just, it just proves from this lockdown how many amazing producers are out there that are still undiscovered. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And Charlie and Charlie, how do you find music for your shows? Do you want to go first, Charlie? <laughs> 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 We're going to get a code before they should be. Um, yeah, so for me, pretty much everything that Sarah said. So I, I feel like like the Owen Westlake track I just told you about, that came from Instagram, TikTok. You'll see like a, a yeah. tune bubbling on a TikTok and you're like, right, get on it because that, you know, in probably a day's time is going to be so big, someone's beating you to it. Promos, I can't. I can't even tell you how many get sent a day, but I love it. And I, I sort of allocate myself half an hour a day, sometimes more, um, every single day to go through all the emails. And I literally, this sounds well sad, but I can't sleep every day until I've cleared that promo box because I just got this thing inside me that if you don't listen to one track, that could be the track that you've missed. Mm -hmm. so it's yeah. just your, my, your laptop is your best mate and your producers <laughs> yeah I also find you have to be in the, the right mood to listen to stuff because I've listened to something in the morning and then gone mm, I don't know if that's quite right and then gone back to it another day and gone I actually really love this so it, yeah. sometimes you need to listen to things a couple of times um yeah and you, you have to be in the right mood to do it let me do well, this yeah. Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, music, exactly like you said, music is so contextual for me. And another thing I love to do is watch some of my favorite tastemakers playing sets and streams because they get the music before anyone in radio does. DJs are on separate mail outs and they will get everything exclusively. So watching some of your favorite tastemakers that are much, you know, in the higher echelons of, of the musical world, you'll get those gems and you'll go for ages. Oh my God, what is that tune they played on the boiler room? Or oh my God, what is that tune they played in their set? Mm -hmm. And you'll be listening out for it for ages waiting for it to trickle down but yeah that's that's a great way to jump on top of stuff um before it kind of comes through and i think watching someone play a track out is sometimes it sounds so different mm -hmm. djing it out than it does in an inbox in an email and i'll have a track that i listen to and go oh i quite like this and i play it out and it goes off and it's like oh it's 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 for that it's utilized for the rave not necessarily for sitting at home or in your car so I think that every track works differently. And like you said, you can listen to it in the morning, not feel it, and then just kind of have it on in the background in the afternoon, be like, oh no, I really, I really like mm -hmm. it. But um, same thing, I think for people coming through that want to kind of get on promo lists and stuff, just work out who the labels are that you love and like kind of pester them. When I was on West Side FM years ago, just community radio station, I managed to get onto loads of big promo lists and I was nobody doing nothing and I just, Tested them and just messaged them every week, like played your track this week, played your track this week, love this track, love this artist, and you just yeah have to be kind of militant. But it is it's definitely a mixture of things. And like you said on on Instagram, following your favorite artists because a lot of them give away free downloads, which you won't get in your promo lists. Mm -hmm. Just keeping on top of your feed and seeing things coming through mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, um, quite a few of those in lockdown coming through, and I'm like, oh, free download, free download. That's a really cool. Yeah. So, yeah. One thing to touch on here, actually, for new artists and anybody that's watching this, just 
take your chance and yeah. send that email, send the promo, because yeah. as you can see, Charlie and Charlie both said, and Sarah mentioned it, they love sitting and going through all of their promos. So even if they don't reply the first time, people are listening to your music. And mm -hmm. that's something that I learned early on within this industry is people do read their emails. Just mm -hmm. because they don't reply doesn't mean that they haven't read it. Mm -hmm. So you've just got to keep on at people. You have to, haven't you, don't you think? Yeah. yeah. And yeah, people are busy too. Like you have to pester people because people are busy. I don't mean not to reply to people sometimes. I'm just busy. Mm -hmm. And then they'll message me again and go, oh, God, I'm so sorry. I forgot to reply to you, but it's not that I didn't want to. So, yeah, definitely mm -hmm. be in the front of people's minds. Yeah. I've noticed a lot of artists recently, like even big artists are putting like just teasers of tracks that they've made on their Insta stories mm -hmm. and are getting massive record labels contact them going what is this tune so if you're someone who makes music I think that's a really good way to tease people and people want to know what that track is and mm -hmm. that's how a lot of people are getting signed at the minute for sure that happened when we were in the studio the other day Sarah <laughs> Yay! 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 <laughs> we did a session together and people were messaging me going what's that track I was thinking it's not finished yet but you know so good um so what I'd love to know Sarah I'd love to come to you um what's the best thing about working in radio Oh, uh, lots of things. Um, you get to be yourself. Um, you get to play music that you absolutely love. Like you're getting, you're getting kind of paid to be yourself and chat and listen to music, which is the dream, really, isn't it? Um, you know, I always used to get told off at school for talking, so it's like, <laughs> yeah, I'm doing it for a job now. Um, so yeah, I just, I absolutely love the fact that you get to go on a live and so even though it's weird because you can't see people but they're there and the texts that come in and connecting with people instantly like everyone's it's like you're at a gig at the same time everyone's experiencing that tune at the same time so I, I really that excites me um and yeah just just the I love getting interaction from the listeners good and bad sometimes it, you get bad stuff and it's quite funny um but yeah I just and the people that you meet like you're meeting like-minded people and it's difficult to get into the radio industry so when you meet other people who work in it you're like god we've, we've really grafted to get here so you're quite you know on the similar pages and it's probably similar kind of people and Charlie Hedges what do you think what's your interaction with people I feel like I feel like this last year has summed up exactly how important radio is for not only everyone listening but as a presenter as well like it's it's been such a comfort blanket for me personally the last year I've I've always always appreciated being in radio don't get me wrong gosh like every day I wake up I'm, I'm so grateful to be in and working in radio and doing my dream job but this last year has been it's been a shock. It's been a shock to all of us. However you've been affected, everyone has been affected. And I feel like radio has been that one consistent thing that you've been able to listen to on a daily basis, whether it's a podcast, actual radio, do you know what I mean? It's, it's always there. So I feel like it's that one person that you always have in your life. And, and for me, like I've... I've had some really, really scary dark times the last year and going into work, you know, Monday to Thursday and on a Saturday has been literally everything to me. So for me, it's the interaction and of course the music, you know, being able to rep dance music, which is my passion 100%. But if I had to pick one thing, it's, it's, it's being able to communicate with that many people. It's just the best thing in the world. Well done. And you're so right about radio. And especially when people are feeling isolated and alone, you put it on and you hear a human voice. And I think, you know, streaming is amazing for listening to music. But this is the one thing, especially this last year, that people really needed, I think. Mm -hmm. Charlie, what are your thoughts on this? Um, I just love that with radio, no one day is ever the same. You wake up and every day, every day is completely different. It's always relevant to what is going on in the world. It's, yeah, it's, it's something that I feel streaming just still can't touch. There were lots of conversations a couple of years ago about how streaming would impact the radio world, but I just, I think it's unparalleled and it's human connection. And like you said, over, over the last 12 months, you stick your radio on, you've got a friend, people that have been living on their own, craving that human connection and really struggling, myself included, not just as a broadcaster who has really found it's helped me sharing music with everyone, creating, creating those shows, but also, as someone who also listens to other people on the radio, listening to you guys on the radio, it's helped me just putting radio on, having a friendly, familiar voice. And um, yeah, it's something that I feel, particularly in the UK, it's just 
so unique here. Like it, our radio system within the UK, I've heard from so many other countries, is just so special mm -hmm. and so unique in the way that everything works. And like you say, Charlie, you know, we can play, we can play a track and it, it can have the ability to get it signed or to have something rock it and, you know, blow up and do really well. That's something that is really unique to UK radio and is really respected worldwide. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to come to some questions from everybody very, very shortly. But one thing I want to ask you all, actually, before we do that is what advice would you give for anybody that wants to get into radio, who wants to be in your position? Do you want to take it, Sarah? Um, I would say work out what type of radio it is that you want to do first and foremost. Do you want to be an entertainment presenter? Do you want to be a specialist presenter? Do you want to be a newsreader, maybe? Do you want to go down the talk radio kind of thing, like LBC, like what is it that you want to do? I think when you know what it is you, that you want to do, that makes it so much easier because I've gone from doing lots of different types of radio. Um, so I think the first thing is to know exactly what type of radio it is that you want to make. And, um, and then try and, and get a demo together, like work out if it is dance music you like, get loads of amazing dance music that you like together and try and put a demo together because if you can get a demo that's, I don't know, five minutes long and try and get it into the hands of a boss at Capital or Kiss or Radio One, that's that's where it all starts really. So yeah, I would say work it, work out what type of radio it is that you wanna do and then try, I mean, and do you know what? You don't even need to get into a studio now to do a demo. Like you can do a demo on your laptop on, I'm sure you probably do it on GarageBand, right? On a Mac, mm -hmm. um, you can do that. Just get a little mic, use a duvet around your head, always works um, and yeah, get a demo together and then, do you know what? It's actually easier than you think to find out who it is that's running the radio stations like Google. Just work it, just find out who's the head, the program controller at this station, that station, and just email them and hopefully they'll reply. Charlie Hedges, what would you say for this one? I would say, um, I would say, enjoy hearing the word no <laughs> and make no a positive. For me, like, I wished I could tell myself, you know, 10 years ago that the word no is actually so important and and actually it gives you that extra fight to want to do better and want to do more and I also feel like that if you start working in radio if you get a foot in the door and you know you want to be you wanted to be a presenter for example if you find that actually working in it or working behind the scenes that that's not what you want to do like it is completely cool to, to not put that pressure on yourself and come away from it. There's so many different jobs you can be doing behind the scenes, whether it's producing, working on music. So, you know, I would say don't be hard on yourself. And if stuff stuff's not going to happen instantly, and it's not all pretty, let me tell you, like it is not going to be a pretty ride unless, unless, I don't know, for some reason you get completely lucky. But yeah, for me, just take no's as a yes. And if I if I had listened without going too deep, um, a long a long time well a, a little while ago, um, someone that I know overheard someone saying, um, "Oh, Charlie's she's just always going to be a tea girl. That that's all she's got in her." And number one, that's well insulting to anyone that makes teas for a living because there's nothing wrong with that. And number two, that was just the biggest push for me when I heard that. I was like. By the way, I still make a terrible cup of tea, so <laughs> that's fine. But I, I, I feel really proud of myself that up to this point, I've achieved everything I want to achieve. So my point is, make rubbish tea, then you won't have to do it anymore, and just be persistent and enjoy it. My gosh, enjoy it. That's the main thing. Remember why you wanted to get into this industry in the first place. And if you're not enjoying it, stop doing it. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. It's a good, it's a, an amazing position to be in and an amazing job. So make sure you're always smiling. Well done. And actually use all of that stuff as fuel. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Charlie T, what would you say? Um, yeah, that was going to be my first point. Just make sure that it's something you really love and enjoy because if you're not passionate about this, trust me, I'm saying to you like 10 years deep, still working away and you, you're still constantly getting no's all the time. You have to love it and you have to really want to better yourself and improve along the way. I think, like you said, every no for me has been a lesson and I've learned from it and I've come away and I've gone, oh, actually, maybe I wasn't that good then and I've learned now and I've come back stronger and I'm better than I was then. So actually I've learned something from it. So yeah, just taking everything kind of as a lesson as you go along, being passionate about it. And I'd say in terms of getting your foot in the door with things, I mean, like Sarah said, yeah, everyone can kind of uh, 
Thanks, uh, have garage band and stuff and you can create things. But I would also still seek out those community radio stations, hospital radio stations, because that's where I really hone my skills. I remember I used mm -hmm. to do like, YouTube blogging years ago, which was great because I was talking at a camera and getting my confidence up. But really where you learn is in a live studio environment. And mm -hmm. you want to make all of the mistakes that you can on a community radio <laughs> Believe you me, because when you're doing it, when I covered your show, Charlie, years ago, I made some mistakes on the breakfast show, and you're like, it's better to make that in front of Charlie. Yeah. Can I just say, Charlie smashed it when Charlie always smashes it, but you did smash oh. it. And, and also, Charlie, the thing to, I think, again, it's that pressure cooker thing is to, yeah. to know that if you do make a mistake, no mm. one cares. You're yeah. human, and actually, the mistakes like you're an incredible DJ presenter. Do you know what I mean? So that those mistakes have made you you. Yeah, that's and that's what I mean. It's it's all part of it. I personally, for me, somebody who didn't, I on the outside, I'm very confident, and I love radio, and I love talking, and I love broadcasting. But on the inside, when I started, I was like, oh my god, this is terrifying. So for me, having those hours in the studio and community radio station, honing my skills and building up my confidence was so important. And also just learning from other people within the industry, like. I used to listen back to all, I don't know if you guys used to do this, I used to listen back to my shows and all of my links and really critique them and pull them apart. Mm -hmm. And I listen to people that have been doing it a lot longer and go, okay, well, what's the difference between what I'm doing and what they're doing? And that's mm -hmm. a great place to start in radio. Who do you look up to and think, how do they How do they build a link? What do they talk about in there? What's their style? What's their tone of voice? Mm -hmm. And try and mimic it in your own way. But yeah, mm -hmm. definitely learn from the greats and try and replicate it. But in a new and fresh way, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Such brilliant advice from all of you. And I just want to shout out every single one of you that's watching on Facebook because we've got some questions from you. <laughs> so what, um, what we would love to know from you, and if you could just take one of these each, that'd be amazing. Um, yeah. Maybe to Sarah first, do you play independent producers? Yes. I will play anybody, really. Um, I, I love everything. I love dance music. I love... I love techno, I love disco, so whatever you're making. I mean, it's obviously, I'm playing dance stuff on the show, so if you are a producer, then yeah, send it my way. Um, I, I, I've got no, well, I don't know what the word is, but yeah, I'll kind of listen to everything and there's nothing that kind of, I'm not, not shunted anything, so yeah, send it my way. Brilliant. Charlie Hedges, what's the best way to get new tracks to either your producer or to you? Um, so I have got more than happy for you to send them to me. I've got oh my gosh, I've just done the worst thing, ain't I? The, uh, the old box <laughs> going. But do you know what? I'm more than happy for you guys to send them to me. Um, Charlie Promo at gmail.com. Just made sure that was not my personal one. And my phone <laughs> <favorite Yeah>. is <laughs> um, more than happy for you guys to send promos over to me because yeah, like exactly what Sarah's saying there's there's no certain type obviously dance anthems are is specifically dance music and in the week we can kind of go a, bit, a little bit more varied but more than happy for anyone to get in contact no problems whatsoever wonderful thank you and Charlie T what's the first track that got you into DJing <gasps> big question oh that's too, oh my god that's too hard um, have, a, have a little think, Sarah and Charlie Hedges, as well. I think that's a really good question to ask everybody. Ah, the first time that maybe that got me into dance music, or maybe want a DJ. That's Either. Really Similar. Yeah. Oh my God. It was just, it would have been. What did I start DJing with? Such a good question, isn't it? Is it? Really it's really hard. I'd, yeah. say, I'd say, like, I'd probably go for more of an album that kind of got me into dance music. And I remember when Chase and Status is More Than A Lot came out and they were touring it and I went to Leeds SU to see him. And I remember being on the front row, looking up at Chase and Status and MC Rage and being like, that is the coolest job in the world. I will never get to do something that cool. And I remember, I just remember this really weird pivotal moment going, that is the best job in the world. That is so mm -hmm. cool. So probably that was a moment for me, that album and all the sounds they were creating because they were fusing jungle and electro and drum and bass and even elements of house and punk and everything in that album. So yeah, it was uh, prob probably around that era. Awesome. Sarah, have you got one? This is such a hard question. I'm going to pick a tune that is my, I, I, it's, a big, it's a big shout this, but I think it's my favourite dance tune of all time. Um, and it's Lauren Garnier, who is like a dance music legend. 
Um, he makes like house, techno, acid house. And there's a track called Man With The Red Face, which Mark Knight actually um, kind of re-edited and he released it like 20, 2008, I think it was. And that's how I discovered the original through that version of it, Man With The Red Face. And then I discovered the original and I was like, ah, oh my God, this tune's amazing. So that's what kind of really got me into this whole dance music thing. Such a brilliant track. Mm. Okay, Charlie Hedges, what's your thoughts on this one? I can't, I can't choose one track, but I can only go with a memory that I've got, and that is the first time going to Ibiza, not as a DJ, but going with my brother, who it was his first time going as well, and it was just the maddest experience. I remember us getting off a flight at like 2 a.m., going straight, straight, I think it was, it, Pete Tom was playing, so it must have been Eden, and I just remember him playing Insomnia, Faithless, and just that, that feeling I got when I just saw a place erupt and everyone be in that same place, wherever you were from in the world, at the same time, just literally loving life. I, I just, I can't pick one tune, but it's just that feeling you get when you see something played live or when you play it live at a set or you hear it on the radio. And it's, yeah, it's, it was just everything. That first time in Ibiza is, yeah, a life, literally game changer. Brilliant. Thank you all so much. This panel's gone so quickly and we could definitely sit here and chat all day. I just want to say thank you all so much. Thanks to all of you who have been putting your questions forward. And the next panel is going to be really amazing as well. It's called The Power of the Collective working together to create inclusivity um, with some brilliant people that are going to be joining us on that. So thank you all so, so much. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we'll see you on the dance floor really soon. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs>